How do they name villages? As Dregs walked down the well-trodden dirt path, he silently gave thanks to the moon for being full this night. For the village seemed intent on hiding its light from him. He could feel the gaze of those hidden away in the dilapidated wooden houses scattered along the sides of the road. Yet, as he passed, curtains drew shut and lights were doused. He did not care. He had no wish to speak to these people. He stopped at the well at the village square and drank straight from the bucket. He imagined for a moment what it must be like to live here, in this small village, and wondered what its people called it. Then, as it often did, the feeling sank in that these people would still be here after he was long gone from this place. And these ponderings were interrupted when he spotted a pair of yellow eyes staring at him from the darkness. He crouched down and pulled something from his pack. The eyes came creeping closer. Dregs held his breath. He extended his hand, and the eyes stopped. The two stood there for what seemed like an eternity, until the black cat came forward and took the piece of dried fish from Dregs' outstretched hand. Satisfied with the offering, the feline allowed Dregs to lightly scratch her head. Good kitty, Dregs smiled. It was the first smile he had smiled in quite some time. Until the castle caught his eye. <clears throat> time to go, he informed the cat. But the cat did not follow him past the village square. Her place was here. She probably had a person who fed her fish and gave her scratches already. So, Dregs walked on. The village itself was surrounded by a wall of iron black bars. The only way out was through a gate ahead. And gates meant gatekeepers. Indeed, an old man cloaked and hooded sat next to the large gate. He leaned against a staff that he would use every now and then to stir the burning embers of his long dead fire. And as Dregs approached, the gatekeeper's raspy voice reached out of the darkness. You've come a long way for nothing, hero. He stirred the embers again. I'm no hero, you old fool. Dregs sighed bitterly. From under his hood, the gatekeeper smiled smugly. Then why do you seek the castle? Because I have to. That is what makes you the hero. Dreg sneered. Right, but, but if I've come here for nothing, my arrival has no effect on your miserable lives. Therefore, I'm not your hero. Moreover, you've just made it clear that whatever was in the castle has long since been dealt with. Which, by the way, suits me just fine, because the only reason I seek it is to simply get past it. The gatekeeper let out a raspy chuckle. <laughs> you think you understand much. Why not stay the night? After all, you will never return here in all your days. Hmm. Well, the inn is just in one fluid motion, as if out of nowhere a dagger appeared in Dregs' hand, which he held to the gatekeeper's throat. Open the gate, old man, he hissed. Very well, the gatekeeper slowly got up from his stool and hobbled towards the gate, grabbing a ring of keys from his belt. After all, you're right. It's not my place. He fumbled with the keys, trying to find the right one. I do hope you find what you're looking for in the castle. The rusty gate screeched on its hinges as the old man gestured towards the enormous obsidian structure that the moon carved out of the night. I never do, Dreg said as the sorrow in his voice betrayed him. 
What do you call this place, anyway? The gatekeeper walked back to his stool. Moment! An odd name, I suppose. Yes, Drake's responded. A very odd name. <laughs>